Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful weather. Thank you for what you are doing in the hearts of the people in South Dakota. You are the one who created these great United States of America. Empower us to live out our creed that founded America long ago. In God we trust. In God we always trust. Display your glory to the world through our hearts and our actions today. We remember the stories that have been told of the founding of this great country with names like Washington, Franklin, Adams, and Jefferson. Your divine providence not only provided protection, but it provided direction. And now, once again, like in the days of old and still to this day, you are stirring in the heart of Dr. Bosworth and everyone here. You are stirring us to act. Guide Dr. Bosworth as her journey begins here. God, it was you working through the hearts of relentless men and women. You created the red, white, and blue, and you will sustain the beliefs and values that those colors represent in our hearts and minds. Grant her and those who go with her wisdom. Grant them favor. Grant them protection. Thank you for being a sovereign God who loves us. Thank you for using the people of South Dakota to accomplish your will. Be with us all the way to the finish line. We are here today to make ourselves available to you, opening our hearts for you to work through us today. We surrender to you and long to work with you. Thank you for continuing to shine your favor and blessing on these great United States of America. Amen. And now I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Annette Bosworth. Thank you. I want to start by saying we need you close. I want to feel your support, so I want everybody up where you can see my eyes. From my fifth grade teacher, thanks for coming, Mrs. Hoback. From my uh, Sunday school teacher, Mr. Hoback, thank you for coming. <laughs> From uh, the uh, lessons that your world uh, came into my world by the services that you did, and that through that, my appreciation for community is this right here, Small Town USA. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. I am a daughter of the prairie. For five generations, my family has lived on these plains of South Dakota. I stand here today in front of you as someone who has fought the government, as someone who has fought bureaucracy, and what I've learned is you cannot run from doing what is right simply because the odds are against you and the experts say you can't win. The fact is sometimes grit and determination in a noble cause can even the odds. It is with this understanding along with a lifetime of learning observing, working, and praying that has led me to announce today my candidacy for the South Dakota seat in the United States Senate. <laughs> for the last 30 days, I've traveled around South Dakota and visited with our fellow neighbors. South Dakota takes pride in their communities, in our state, and in our nation. Traveling the state, talking with old friends, and making new ones, a palpable frustration exists in the way things are going in our nation today and an unease with the choices we have in who will represent South Dakota in our nation's capital. South Dakotans do not want another go-along to get-along candidate, and they do not want a career politician. 
They are looking for someone who stands, who understands that our nation is a nation at risk, is willing to lead the fight to fix what is obviously broken. My vision is not simply to go back to the policies of the past, but to move towards tomorrow with a grasp on today and an understanding of yesterday. How can we take the successes of the past, use them in the turmoil and decay of the present and transform tomorrow, restore what has been lost and what is being lost? And what we are losing is our freedom, our fiscal restraint, and our moral character. Our basic freedoms as Americans are being eroded at an alarming rate. In the mask and deception of security and the word safety, our right to privacy is being stolen by government officials that claim to represent only our best interests. It's, this is not only through the recent issues with the IRS, but also in what will happen with your health care information. The federal government continues to grow, and its intrusion into our daily lives seems to have no bounds. As our next senator, I vow to oppose any threat to our personal freedom and any weakening in our constitutional rights. Yeah.